Hello and welcome back to The Brompton Guy. In today's episode, we are diving deep into the inner workings of the new Brompton G-Line Electric. We will explore how the electric system is set up and discuss how the power is transferred from the battery to the rear hub motor for that all-important electric assist. I've got some fantastic close-up shots of these components to help illustrate how everything works along with some helpful diagrams to make it even clearer. If you are curious about the intricate details of the G-Line Electric, this video is just for you. So sit back, relax and cue the intro. He's the Brompton Guy! As many of you know, I ordered my Brompton G-Line Electric as soon as it was announced and I've been eagerly awaiting its arrival ever since. However, G-Line Electrics haven't shipped to any customers yet, as Brompton is making further software revisions before sending out the first pre-orders. This news came directly from Brompton and I'm grateful for their commitment to quality before processing pre-orders. In the meantime, I'll continue digging for details about this bike so when it arrives, I'll have knowledge from day one to share with you all. The electric system on this bike has been developed from the ground up, representing a significant innovation in Brompton's offerings. One of the most notable changes is the shift of the hub motor from the front wheel to the rear wheel. This design decision has sparked mixed feedback within the Brompton community. With some riders expressing concerns about the performance, it's important to recognise that both front motors and rear motors have their own trade-offs. Personally, I believe Brompton chose a rear motor for this model because it offers better traction on loose surfaces which can be a considerable advantage for urban cyclists navigating varied terrain. However, that's not the primary focus for today. Today we'll dive into specifics of how Brompton designed this system and how the power reaches the rear hub motor. Let's start with the battery, which is an essential component of the G-Line Electric. This is Brompton's largest battery, specifically designed to provide ample power to the rear hub motor, ensuring a smooth and effective electrical assistance experience during your rides. Like all electric Bromptons, the battery attaches to the front carrier block, but this version is uniquely designed for the G-Line Electric, which means previous bags won't fit. This redesign is part of Brompton's commitment to integrate functionality with their aesthetic and reliability. Once the battery is securely clipped in, it connects to a wiring loom that runs through the bike's main frame. This wiring delivers power precisely where it is needed. Inside the front carrier block, you'll find a small circuit board featuring three connections. One connects a battery cable, which transfers power from the battery to the controller unit located at the rear of the bike. The other two connections serve different functions. One powers the pre-mounted front light, and the other is a spare allowing for future accessories or innovations Brompton may have in mind. The wiring loom then travels through the main frame, passing the folding joint and extending all the way to the seat post area where it exits through a grommet designed for this purpose. At this point, the battery connects to the controller unit which is critical for powering the rear hub motor, the rear light and the torque sensor located in the bottom bracket. An important note is that all of these parts are removable and replaceable. This feature greatly enhances the bike's repairability, allowing you to run the bike like a standard manual G-Line if you choose to. The controller unit situated on the rear triangle is the brain of the operation. It processes all the information needed to deliver power in a way that matches your riding style and requirements. This unit connects to the torque sensor in the bottom bracket. So what exactly is a torque sensor? 
In simple terms, it accurately measures and transmits your pedaling forces, optimizing the electric assist system for a smoother and more responsive riding experience. This sensor is also vital for ensuring compliance with speed limits for electrical assistance set by various countries. In the UK, that limit is 15.5 miles per hour. The torque sensor adapts to your pedaling style, enhancing both efficiency and comfort during your ride. Since the controller unit handles substantial processing, it can generate heat, which is why it's equipped with a heat sink designed to dissipate the heat effectively. Brompton recommends regularly cleaning the heat sink to prevent overheating issues. Additionally, the controller unit provides power to the included rear light, which is an excellent feature for any commuters out there enhancing safety during low light conditions. I genuinely believe this will be one of the best commuter Bromptons on the market, but only time will tell. Finally, the controller unit has a built-in cable that runs down the side of the rear triangle and connects to the hub motor mounted on the rear wheel. Because the G-Line Electric features a rear motor, it doesn't come with the 8-speed Shimano Alfine hub. Instead, it uses a 4-speed derail your setup first introduced with the Brompton P-Line. This choice has been met with mixed opinions. Some riders feel it should have retained the front hub design. I completely understand this perspective. However, for me, I appreciate the discreet nature of a rear hub motor. To an untrained eye, it just looks like a regular bike rather than an obvious e-bike, which I find very appealing. Now, I'll display a diagram I've created to help visualize the setup in case you found it challenging to follow along. Overall, I'm quite pleased with how straightforward the installation of the electric components are for the Brompton G-Line. Initially, I feared the parts would be built into the frame, making it impossible to switch from a manual to electric configuration. However, it seems like Brompton will give you the option to purchase these components individually through the Brompton's website though it won't be cheaper than buying the complete bike outright. Before wrapping up, I am excited to share that I'm launching a new podcast called Beyond the Fold. This podcast will dive deeper into the world of folding bikes, cycling culture and everything related to the Brompton community. Each episode will feature interviews with fellow Brompton enthusiasts industry experts, and even some exciting guest riders. We'll discuss tips, tricks, and the latest trends in the Brompton market, as well as sharing inspiring stories from riders around the globe. Whether you're a seasoned cyclist or just starting your Brompton journey, Beyond the Fold aims to bring you valuable insight and entertaining discussions. I'm thrilled about this new venture and hope you can join me for it when it is released. And with that news, let's get back on track by talking about my Brompton pre-order. I'm still on track to receive my pre-order in mid-November and I can't wait to start sharing more hands-on content with you. I understand this might have been a bit too in-depth for some viewers, but my goal is to provide you with a fuller understanding of how Brompton has crafted this electric version. If you've learned something new today, I have plenty of other videos that you might find helpful. One of them will pop up on screen now. As always, thank you for watching and I really appreciate you tuning in and hopefully I'll see you soon for the next one and be on the fold when it is released. Thank you and goodbye. He's the Brom.